God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the gift you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what they find from the font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who shares with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on the scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Normally before this Mass begins, I, I like to just check in with Christine and talk a little bit about the Sunday and, you know, what she has in mind musically and what my thoughts might be so that we can create a nice liturgy for all of you. But when Christine saw me today, she said, how was your week off? And I said, it was really great. And she said, did you do anything? And I said, well, I said, I went to bed early and I got up late every day. I had to cook breakfast every morning. I was with my best friend three out of the five days. I read a book just for pleasure. And also during that time, I watched my favorite comedy, Young Frankenstein by Mel Brooks. And as usual, Mel Brooks was inspiration for my thoughts for you today. If you're familiar with Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, he is the great, great grandson of the man who created the monster. And now he is teaching in this prestigious medical school in New York City. And in this scene, he is trying to teach his students the difference between a voluntary and an involuntary reflux. So a voluntary reflux, reflex is something that we intentionally do. Raise your left hand. Raise your right hand. An involuntary reflex is something that happens instantaneously because the body senses something else. So for instance, if God forbid we're driving home after Mass today, some crazy person pulls his car right in the path of our traffic, we instantly hold on to the steering wheel tighter, we brace ourselves for impact. That's an involuntary reaction. But maybe we could come up with a better example than that. In order for us to live, every one of us has to breathe. But do we take the time to think, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out? No, it's an involuntary reflex. That reflex is something that just comes instinctively. Now, we can't voluntarily hold our breath. We can hold our breath till we turn blue. And then we pass out. But because we voluntarily did it, the body is going to kick back in again, we're going to gasp for air, and we're going to start breathing again. Unless there is some external means, we cannot die by holding our breath. So, in light of the fact that we have voluntary and involuntary reflexes, I'd like to talk about voluntary and involuntary doubt, aka our readings for today, Doubting Thomas Sunday. A voluntary doubt is when we intentionally, despite all the best information we have, we deny that it exists. So I can pick on my dear friend over here. And I can call this gentleman Bob. As I did in the past. Except his name is Pat. Patrick. Patrick Brennan. A good Polish name, you know. But anyway. It took me a while to realize his name is Patrick, not Bob. But my mind here for the longest time was telling me he's a Bob. You know, he's a Patrick. I can pick
pick on Dolores and say, Dolores, that's a beautiful pale blue coat that you have on today. But if I tell her that the coat is orange, she's going to say, Father, it's not orange. She's going to say, were you sipping sacramental wine before you got here or what? We can deny things. We can deny things as they really are. An involuntary doubt is where something makes us doubt, something makes us question, something that we always believed, but now we're not sure. And normally, those experiences happen when something bad happens to us. You know, to go back to my dear friend, Rabbi Kirshner, who wrote the book, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? I've just about worn out the pages. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why did my mother have to die from cancer? Why did my brother have to take the stroke in his 50s and now he's severely impaired? And his family find a difficult time taking care of him. Why was my best friend killed in a car accident? Why this? Why that? Why this? And believe it or not, it revolves around that question, why? When we say, why do bad things happen to good people? There's never an answer to a why question. Because we'll always come up with something else that's going to make this question more. How much experience do you guys have with two-year-olds? Mommy, why is the sky blue? Because God made it that way. Well, why did God make the sky blue? Because God can do all things. Well, Mommy, why does God do all things? It's one question after another. It's not a why question when we are faced with challenges in our life, when bad things happen to us in our life. The question we need to ask is, what is God trying to teach me by this experience? What does God want me to learn? Whether it's through death, through illness, realizing we're getting too old to do something, Realize that maybe we didn't study hard enough. What is God trying to tell me? Unfortunately, we've gotten more in this voluntary doubt mode where we want to question everything, even the basic truths, the existence of our lives, the basic principles of our faith. And so this creates problems for us. Every one of us in this church today would probably pass a basic quiz on our Catholicism. You could tell me about the mysteries of faith, the doctrines of faith, the principles of faith. But do you have faith in them? Do you believe in the healing presence of the Eucharist? Do you believe in the forgiveness of God's mercy and reconciliation? Do you know the purpose of prayer? When we question those things, it doesn't mean we're a bad person. But rather, it has us probe deeper to make our strength stronger. One of the lines from the Gospel today, when Jesus appeared to the Apostles, He showed them His wounds. He did not do that to make them feel guilty. He did not do that to cast up into their face, saying, look what you did to me. Why couldn't any of you have hung around? No, in His woundedness, He showed them and us that he conquered all obstacles. In the midst of doubt, there will always be faith. 
in the midst of doubt, we are encouraged to dig deeper into what it really means. Now, for years, many of us have called this Sunday, the second Sunday after Easter, down in Thomas Sunday. We now call it Divine Mercy Sunday because on Easter Sunday, the second Sunday after Easter, St. Pope John Paul II, in the year 2000, canonized Sister Faustina, who diary talked about the divine mercy of God. And so, these two holy saints promoted basically a reinvigoration of the devotions of the Sacred Heart. Jesus' Sacred Heart burns for love for us. Jesus' Sacred Heart has a crown of thorns round and round, round, round it, representing its woundedness because of our sins. And still in all of this, God's divine mercy is present to love, to forgive, to care. Isn't that basically what our faith is all about? So when we have our doubts, doubts about the goodness of the world, doubts about the goodness of another person, doubts about a commitment, doubts about something bad that might have been experienced to us, God will always provide faith, hope, and love, and mercy, and the power to forgive. So very often, People will say, Father, I confess this before, but I can't forgive myself. That is a voluntary doubt. And that is turning your back on God. Because God will never, ever, ever allow us to stop breathing in His love. I believe in one God.
for this faith community. May the Holy Spirit continue to uphold and strengthen us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, mark with the sign of faith. May the Lord bring them into the joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and love, we thank you for giving us your only Son. Please hear our prayers, which we ask in his name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The offertory anchor is the People's Master, number 672, in peace, number 672. Amen.
accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Just a couple announcements before we dismiss outside on this beautiful afternoon. Rest in peace to Edith Mormis, who we laid to rest this past week. And confessions and exposition of the Blessed Sacrament will begin again this Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Please note that the bulletin is incorrect. The bulletin says we have Mass at 8.30. We did that for Lent to provide people that have another opportunity to get to church in addition to stations. But we'll begin with our Tuesday evening uh, Masses again with a period of exposition and confessions. The Feast of Corpus Christi is June 19th. Bishop Schler is using the Feast of Corpus Christi to culminate two major events in our diocese. First, the 60th anniversary of the founding of our diocese, and also to culminate the year of the real presence that he has called to reinvigorate our devotion to the Eucharist in so many different ways, which we have tried to do throughout the year here at Holy Cross. Bishop is inviting us and the entire diocese to participate in a special Mass to be held on Sunday, June 19th at 3 p.m. in the oldest church in the diocese, also coincidentally named after the Blessed Sacrament, and this is in Valley, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour here in Berks County. So I would like to see if we can sponsor a bus between the two parishes so that we have a good representation from the parishioners of Holy Cross and St. Clair of Assisi. Um, as I said, we'll sponsor the bus, and then when it comes time for the Eucharistic procession, uh, I'm going to have a banner made with Holy Cross Church on, and hopefully all those people that are going to join us from the parish can uh, follow along in the procession, proudly proclaiming that we're parishioners of Holy Cross. So, uh, but in order to do that, I need to know if we have people. So if you would kindly, during the business hours, uh, give the rectory a call or jot a little note and throw it in the collection basket, that would be a help. Uh, First Holy Communion will be held here in the parish on Saturday, May 7th at 10.30. And that's pretty much it for our announcements. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the we are our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, be humble and pray, and do thou the princes of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into us Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the of souls. Amen. Let us May the mysteries of the resurrection always remain with us to give us faith, hope, and love in the eternal life of Christ by his wounds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the blessed and almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Have a great day.